Damn. So I, my family was like, oh, I guess that's cool. She's really young. I was like four. They're like, maybe we have a prodigy on our hands because she's drawn to this instrument. And then I started learning to play it and getting these lessons. Um, so they're like, all right, I guess we'll get her some violin lessons. And I hated it because it hurt my thumb for some mm. reason. I was like, it hurts my thumb. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so then I played piano for like a year and then I hated piano. But I kept on playing all these instruments over the years, and then finally I started playing other string instruments. And so I like, it was full circle. I finally came back to like banjo and guitar, and feel like I like it a lot better than like clarinet, French horn. Okay. Played baritone sax for a while. Really? I literally played all of these great instruments, but things that um, I wasn't able to really use to express myself. Okay. You didn't but feel it's as funny. <laughs> It's funny that it started with violin. I had to like go through a journey before I. I still really like playing banjo. I just don't play banjo. I went backwards. I played. I wanted a guitar so bad, and it bothered my parents until they finally bought one. And then I played it all the time. And well, that was the only thing I ever played. I was like, my dad's like, you should probably take piano lessons. Like, learn how to play the piano. Yeah. You could do that. I was like, no, I need to play the guitar only. And so I did that for so long. And then eventually I got tired of it. Now I've like tried to teach myself other instruments. But the guitar was the instrument that I started playing. Yeah. Well, you're, you're good on it. Yeah, well, it's easy <laughs> yeah, when you do it long enough. Because I have, like, a peripheral knowledge yeah. of, like, a lot of things. But I'm, I'm still now, like, especially electric guitar is different than acoustic guitar, which is different than, like, everything else. Mm -hmm. So I only got my first electric guitar for this band, so I'm still learning. <laughs> Before that, you were mostly... Yeah, well, it's like acoustic and finger-picking and folk stuff, so it's a constant. Evolution. Evolution. <laughs> Process. Process. And what's the story behind the guitar you have now? So how long have you had it? Uh, actually, this is the second guitar ah. because the first one was a Dan Electro um, a reissue, and I really loved it. And I I was interested in them because you know Cat Power plays Dan Electros, mm -hmm. and like our friend Cassie um, and Vivian Girls and Babies, she like had a Dan Electro, and she's pretty badass. So I was like, I respect that girl. And they're cheap. They're really cheap. They're like, you can get one for like $150, $200. So I was like, I'm not making an investment until I know that I can make this happen. So I got this Dan Electro, but the problem is, is some of them are a little faulty. So I kept going out of tune and it was, why are we sounding so bad on stage? And it turned out it was just the guitar, really. I mean, maybe I was a little rough. But <laughs> so then I, uh, our friend Gabe, like, let us buy his guitar for like $200. And it was a really good deal. It was like an accident. It was really accident. We needed a new guitar and our friend was like, I'm selling a guitar. And so we bought it. All right. I hadn't even tried it out. I was just like, have him buy that guitar for me. Mm -hmm. You got it. Have that friend give it to you. Yeah. But I mean, it's cool because I feel like it's been happenstance and they like found me. So I like it. Our equipment matches too, which Someday, is cool. Mm, yeah. We Everything have we have is black and white. <laughs> yeah. How long have you had your about the same amount. I got it around the time when Molly got her Dan Electro. Yeah. Because I had a bunch of crappy guitars. Mm -hmm. um, because I had, when I played in other bands, those guitars went off into the other bands mm -hmm. after I was done. Kind of collateral. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I lost a couple like that. And then so the band started like playing gigs and I was like, crap, I have to buy like a good guitar yeah. now. And so I just went online every day to look for used guitars. And I bought this one off of a teenager in the Upper East Side. Mm -hmm. His parents had definitely bought it for me. He had never used it. Mm -hmm. Really? So, yeah, I inherited Sweet. it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice guitar. It's about the same as yours. Neither of them are pretty fancy. They were both made in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know anything about guitars, so I think it's cool to just work with what you have. And mm -hmm. then eventually, someday, I imagine the first guitar I actually pick out on purpose mm -hmm. will be like a weird vintage guitar shop in some place where we're on tour, and I'll be like, that's the Although, to be fair, I think a lot of the way I play, I pick the guitar on purpose, because it has two different pickups in it, and you can, like, switch between the two, but this switch, which is not, like, the normal switch that Molly's Fender mm -hmm. has, so, it, like, I, I did a lot of stuff when we started playing, and I didn't even use effects, and I would just switch between the two, like, sounds in the guitar, and I'd be like, this is, like, the high yeah. sound and the low sound. Um, so, I guess that kind of guitar was kind of important, actually. Yeah, yours is, like, a custom, right? Yeah, okay. something like that. But the two pickups give, like, different tones. So it was fun to switch between the two like, in the middle of the song. Mm -hmm. Got really good at using the switches and turning it around. And those are our guitars. All right. <laughs>
we like we haven't really. I mean, he he plays in another band, and like you know, me and Michael both have our like solo things that we don't really do anything with. But I but like our you know we have friends who are in like four different bands or five different bands, and like when you're not when you get back from a tour, I think a lot of bands have like. A long period of time free, and maybe pick up another project. Well, tonight we're playing with the babies, who are uh, Cassie from the Baby Girls and Kevin from the Woods. So yeah. those are two Brooklyn yeah. bands, and sort of like cross pollinated. Totally. Like Kevin is on tour probably like nine months out of the year. So. With one of the two bands. Yeah. Lucky bastard. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's weird because we were all kind of in the New York area for a while, but they were they were in school, and I was in school for a while, and then just kind of working. Um, and we've been involved in music from where we're, we're from. He's from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Me and Michael are from Tacoma. But um, we're still kind of new to like the whole music part of Brooklyn because yeah. um, I guess it's not playing here. But once once you start playing shows, you realize it's a it's a pretty tight community and like it's big. There's a lot of bands you come here, but um, a lot of the same people will come to like your shows and your friends shows and the bands you like shows. And so you meet people really easily. Um, especially in like the Todd P yeah. circuit, like we used to practice at Monster Island, yeah. and then we used to we still do. But we played at Monster Island. We played at 285 Kent. Um, yeah. So we were kind of. I mean, you go to one of those shows, and it's like, yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of people you don't know, but there's also like a whole bunch of people you, you start recognizing people. You start talking to them, and then it turns out you all know the same people, which you didn't think you did. Mm -hmm. So it's cool because you realize like I'm not just. A speck in a haystack or needle in a haystack. haystack. But no one's looking for you, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. I know, yeah. But it's, it's, it's easy to make friends. It's pretty, it's, it's like the, the top P scene is kind of like what people would tell you New York music scene would be like. Like, yeah, you'll go to a cool place, the Which, dude's working in the door, will tell you about another band, and they'll be in a band. Mm. And it's cool. It's not mm. bad at all. Yeah, it, it's really not like people being better or too cool. Because, like, a lot of the bands are really insane or, like, Pretty straightforward. Like it's the whole spectrum. It's yeah. not just like. You know. certain, it's got popular for being a certain type of music, yeah. but it's not necessarily yeah. that type of music. It's it's very all inclusive, and um, it's really easy to get shows. Like our first show was at it was at Shea Stadium, which was like another DIY venue. Around the corner. Like from there, it's just like you put together bills with bands that you either want to play with or people ask you. I I think it. Very easily navigable. Navigable. <laughs> because like I, I'm from like a smaller city where it was like, oh okay, there's the bar and then the teen Christian all ages club. Those are the two places you can yeah. Or like the open mic night. It's better because that way you guys will find each other quickly. Yeah. Well, I'm mean, yeah. I mean, there's also not very many people to come over into music, but um, so I mean, Brooklyn has been kind of a lot more because it's different all the time. But I love to come to it.